I think it's fair to say that uh, policing in Gibraltar, like everywhere else, and certainly my 27 years, um, has changed somewhat. Uh, the officers today face a level of scrutiny um, that certainly wasn't there back in my in my earlier years. Um, there's accountability levels that are, are certainly increasing, um, and rightly so. People expect a professional organisation, they expect a professional service, um, but a lot more is expected by the officers in return, so the pressures on them are certainly growing. The injuries sustained by officers are both physical yeah, exactly. and mental. Yeah. Um, the physical ones, depending on its nature, are relatively easy to overcome. Um, but I think it's the lasting damage that the psychological ones do yeah. um, that are the really difficult ones to do. Um, and these sorts of things have a knock-on effect. Uh, not only do they have a knock-on effect to the individual, but also to their colleagues, mm. also to the organisation, and more importantly, to the service that we can provide the public in Gibraltar. I think the, the long-term aim needs to be addressing a lot of issues. Yeah. Um, the legislation, I know, has been amended, Mr. Feetham, um, has been great for us. We work very closely with him um, and he's very supportive. Uh, but that needs to be reflected in the legislation. It needs to be reflected in the levels of fines that are available. Because remember that not only do we lose out on losing a body that can't provide a service, but that person needs to be replaced. Uh, that individual officer, if they need to be replaced, that has to come from somewhere else. So somewhere else suffers because that officer has had to move to front line. Uh, or it's covered with overtime, which again is a taxpayer's cost. Um, so the community suffer in many ways, not just the police officer.